next I want to take some time to discuss when children test your resolve. This can start as young as two, but I, it never showed up in my children until they were about three and a half. Around three and a half, they start to develop a sense of independent desires. They are no longer content to do just whatever you ask or whatever you say. They start to develop ideas of their own and what they want to do. Some of these things may be well and good, and some of these things may be dangerous and not set a healthy precedent for your relationship or the future. For example, you might be used to picking out your child's clothes, right? It's something as simple as that, and choosing their food, right? One day, the child may say, I don't want to wear that. I, I want to wear my pajamas all day. They're expressing to you that they are ready to pick, pick out, to start picking out their own clothes. Maybe pajamas are fine today, but tomorrow it's not, right? So this is where it is useful to explain. Some days it is fun to wear pajamas all day, but it's important that we don't do it every day. So you make a deal today. Today it's fine, but tomorrow we have to go out. You understand we're going out tomorrow. You can't wear your pajamas when we go out. There is a reason for that. It's not just arbitrary. Bed clothes are not street clothes and never the twain shall meet. It's, it's a hygiene issue for me. The clothes you wear to bed are thin and comfortable and we, we like to be in them. They're, they're nice to wear, but they're not tough enough to endure outdoor activities. They get holes in them, they get ripped, they get torn, they're not for wearing outside. Um, I, and also, there's also the, the risk that they've worn this, these pajamas all day long and playing outside or whatever they were doing, and then they wear them to bed that night, which can, makes the sheets dirty because they've got all the pollen and all the dust that you've walked through that day. So, so it is a hygiene issue. Tomorrow comes and the child willingly gets dressed and you reward them with which shirt would you like to wear today and which pair of pants and have them start to fetch it themselves from the dresser. Like maybe you do it sooner, like when they're 18 months, they get it themselves. They help, they, children love to act older than they are. So when they get that independence, they love to dress themselves. They pick out their own clothes, it helps them feel grown up and big and part of the family instead of a piece of furniture that gets weighted on all the time. The other possibility is that the child has conveniently forgotten your agreement and insists that they wear pajamas all day long. But you must insist that they keep their word and stick to their agreement. Um, and this is where you have to put your foot down no matter how many tantrums little Tally can throw. You, you gotta put your foot down and she doesn't get to wear pajamas to go out. And, and if you get her dressed soon enough, you, don't, you won't be late to your appointment. You are within your rights to enact punishment for any resemblance of a fit. Throwing tantrums only loses you privileges, so they quickly learn several things. One, tantrums aren't worth losing my privileges. And two, when I bargain, I have to follow through. And three, my parents' resolve will not be swayed by throwing a fit. So. Doing this the first time helps you not be a pushover. It shows them you're not a pushover and they won't develop that tendency to throw a hissy fit. They may kick, they may scream, they may say they hate you and never want to see you again. And these are all words said in the heat of the moment, expressing their rage and frustration and you should not allow yourself to be swayed by it. They in no way reflect th their love for you. They are testing their boundaries, and when they test you, the most important constant factor in their life should be that you will not be swayed by hysterics. You have your fit. Throw your tantrum, cry into your pillow, scream at the wall, but you remain their steady, constant star pointing the way to home and victory. The victory I am going for is calm, civilized conversation with polite negotiations that everyone is freely welcome to participate in. Parents often miss these essential teaching moments early on because it breaks their hearts. Some parents may not be willing to engage the tantrum over something as silly as pajamas. Caving into it only ensures its return in the future. Never reward hysterics. 
Be patient, be calm, don't fret. Your child still loves you. They are attempting to express themselves. Teach them by your reactions that the best way to communicate with you is with their words and not their fits. That means they learn to talk and you learn to listen. You never have to give in to hysterics. I want to emphasize that I do encourage my children to ask me questions. My husband and I, if you know us, you know we love questions. If the child is willing to enter into negotiations, we will listen to proposals. But ultimately, the children know they have to live by the verdict, even if they don't like it. So, you as the parent can establish the gavel moment. Maybe it's a phrase or a look that communicates the discussion is closed. The verdict has been announced and the decisive sentence will be carried out. When they present a valid perspective, we reward them with leniency. Well done. You have successfully negotiated yourself out of X, Y, and Z. I insist on polite negotiation, so sometimes my husband will help them reword their encounter. So they see the difference between what they said and what a successful attempt might look like. That helps them learn. So the child says something out of a fit of rage, which is what happens when they're like, I hate this and I hate my life, or whatever it is that their, their verbal vomit throws up because they're frustrated at not getting exactly what they want when they want it. So if their meltdown is about pajamas, the phrase would be, so mama, if I change my clothes for our outing, may I change back into my pajamas when we get back? If asked politely and respectfully, I would reward them with a yes. I, I, I wouldn't say yes. For the, especially for providing it their own creative, peaceful solution. Uh, sometimes, if we have a string of apparently rude difficulties communicating, which happens, you know, we're family, the issue will be, be presented in the, their next action figure campaign for the children to adjudicate. So. Sometimes they see similar themes pop up in their stories that they play with dad, only this time it's reversed where the child has to be the parent and they have to tell the uh, Magneto why he can't turn the earth inside out just because he wants to or whatever, you know, I'm just, I just made that up. I'm not as good at the storytelling as my husband is. I apologize for that. But you get the idea. They just, they learn a lot experiential decision-making, vocabulary development, communication skills, negotiation skills, leadership roles, all of those things. So just to summarize, I need the reminder that children learn through play. For my own personal reasons, I need that reminder. It is not useful to think of them testing boundaries as playing or toying with you because it's already infuriating enough. But understand that it is related. It's related to their, their learn through play. They're learning through, they're, they're testing their boundaries. If I say these horrible, mean, hurtful words to my parents, will they cave? And it's not that they're doing it consciously. They're just reaching, they just know that there's something they want because they have a very, their brains haven't grown in all the way yet. And what's happened is they want something very simple and simply, they will try anything to get it, which is not civilized. It is ruthless and vicious sometimes, the things that they say. Um, and not every child is the same, obviously, but they do learn things from each other and from you. <laughs> so you might recognize some of your own behaviors thrown back in your face, which is a learning opportunity for all of us. How I come to terms with allowing it, even though I never allowed it myself as a child. Healthy balance, right? Functional, healthy adults contributing to society. And that makes a better world for all of us.